you don't want to ruin your cameras here by taking pictures of me. It will go into shock. And I'm not liable. When I looked at today's gospel, there was something that struck me, and that was the last sentence. And ironically, Grace, it's something that might be applied to you by a little bit of a stretch in our imagination. He was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. I don't know if you know how Grace ended up with this name. But her parents were, I would like to fantasize, on a cruise by my home country of Malta. And uh, there was Grace Kelly. And they said, if we have a daughter, that will be her name. And so here she is. The majority of us come from other countries. We have foreign roots. In fact, if you look at all of the priests and the bishop here, only one is American, Father Jim. The rest of us are foreigners, including the bishop. I hope you know that, right? I think there is a subtle thing that gives us away. It's called an accent. And it gives you away too. We are in a community where we use their language, we do commerce, we exchange ideas, we get educated in the system, but the native, like Father Jim, he is over there, just in case you don't know who he is, well, he, you know, he's our token American this time. <laughs> know that we have foreign roots because of our accent, not because of our ideas per se, because we might not be saying anything except a few words of greeting. Well, in a way, that is our vocation. Our roots are in Christ, and we live in a culture alien to Christian values. And our accent, our Christian commitment, our Christian values, should be a giveaway to society at large. And I think this is one of the things that, thank God, not to praise you, Grace, you have managed to do. 500 years ago, the Spaniards came to your islands to really plant Christianity. Eventually, the Irish came to your islands to not only build on what was taken uh, for a number of centuries, but also to, I think, it's not because the bishop is here, uh, to educate you. So you had the Spanish Augustinians, you had the Dominicans, you name it, they were there. You had the first University of San Tomas in, in the Far East, it was there. But you see, that was for the intellectual people. And the Irish missionaries came to what Francis, Pope Francis says, to smell like the sheep they lead. In other words, to live in your midst. Now, it's very ironic that you came here and you brought with you what your ancestors have inherited for 500 years. And you brought with you hope, you brought with you uh, generosity, you brought with you laughter, you brought with dreams that can take on flesh. And all of us and many others who are not present here have benefited from this gift, which is actually the meaning of your name. Grace means gift. Five years ago, I was uh, kind of preaching, probably here, uh, on a very wobbly, do you remember that? It was very wobbly up here. It had nothing to do with my weight. It had to do with the weight of the other priests. Uh, 
And I reflected on, on Grace comparing it, her life to a rose. Today, I'd like to extend that metaphor. And that is, a rose is something that exudes a scent. So that when the rose is gone and people come in, they know there was one because of that scent. And that scent distracts the people from their worries, anxieties, concerns, even things they don't like or people. Because the scent attracts their attention. Well, in a way, you are that scent because God has used you so that when you are there, even after you're not physically present there, through your ministry, through your service, through your love and generosity, people are distracted from the vicissitudes of life and concentrate on something really good that God has given them through you. So today, we are here not only to praise you, but especially to praise God, who in his grace gave the gift of grace to us. Today also, you become a burden to the American government. You qualify for Medicare. <laughs> May you never use it by being blessed with good health. And should you use it, may you find the fastest recovery so that we not only smell the scent of the rose of grace, but we'll be blessed, blessed with your presence. We are reminded that at the celebration of Mass, heaven comes down. Literally, heaven comes down. This altar will be surrounded. Not only with the community of saints and angels, but also will God will be present. He puts on the outfit of bread and wine. So that what we see is not what is really behind it. And that is Christ himself. And who is going to be here present? Our Lady. St. Joseph. Your parents. Your brother. They are celebrating with us. And in the real sense of the Eucharist. We give thanks to God. We praise God. And we thank you. Happy birthday. I was going to say a joke, but I'm not sure, you know, because the bishop is Irish. But maybe I should say it. Because there's a distance between us at the moment. And he looks like he is in, 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 great, in a great mood. And that is, Paddy and Bridget were married for many, many years. They came from Mayo. I better choose another county. <laughs> And Patty said to Bridget, I cannot remember when I celebrated last, the last 65 years of birth. And she said to him, Patty, you got it wrong. Men celebrate only one 65 years. I celebrate 39 every year. And that's why I am keeping you Busy, happy, and poor. Wow. You are not keeping us busy. You are keeping us happy. And you are certainly enriched by your life and your ministry. Amen. Thank you, Grace.